we're speaking any way about what they are doing wrong. We're just, well, you are who you are, but what I'm feeling is this, and what I need is this. It's in focusing on what is going on in me rather than our judgment of him. It is you, in you statements, we are judging the other person, and that puts him immediately in the, de in the defensive role. When we make I statements, he may also go into defensive role because people are very defensive. They're very, they've been criticized a lot in their lives, and they're very fearful. And there's nothing magical about this. It doesn't work 100%. But certainly, there's less possibility of creating this fear in the other person when we come towards him with an I message and not with a you message. And the second technique is called active listening, in which we learn to listen more actively and ask questions which help that person to uh, externalize himself even more clearly and helps us to understand more clearly what is going on inside of him. Now before we go on to how those two tools are used, let's talk a bit about how people communicate today. One way, one means of communication is non-communication, that is suppression. Many people uh, especially women, in the, in, especially in this area of the world, have been programmed not to express needs, not to express desires or feelings, to, to suppress them. So one means of communication is suppression. I don't tell the other person what I'm feeling. I don't externalize what my needs are, and I wait for the other person to know. And then I become unhappy when this other person is not responding to needs which I have not expressed very clearly. I have not made it very clear that this bothers me or that I would like to have this uh, or, what, or I have certain needs, whatever that may be. When those are not expressed very clearly, what is the result? First of all, it's very clear that suppressed emotions create illness. Uh, all kinds of r rheumatic problems, arthritic problems, cancer, headaches, hormonal problems, colitis, uh, ulcers, all, all of these psychosomatic illnesses are created by uh, negative emotions which are causing a restriction of energy flow in the body, a disturbance in the hormones, and, their, and the suppression of the functioning of the immunological system, that is, the, the, the defense system of the, of the body is weakened by these unexpressed emotions. So the, the body is just ready for illness. It could be infl inflammations, it could be cancerous cells, it could be various uh, types of problems and disturbances in the body. Secondly, it, it's a disturbance in the mind. The mind is never really relaxed. This is sitting in the subconscious, this feeling of hurt, this feeling of injustice, this feeling of not being satisfied, of not being respected, of not being loved. These feelings are in there, and they're working in the subconscious, and they're occupying a great deal of the subconscious mind. So there's less creativity, less peace of mind, less clarity in our daily functioning. Another result is that all of our feelings are actually transmitted to the other person anyway. We call, this is the, uh, the effect of two connected containers. That is, if I have a container here and a container here and there's a pipe which is connecting them and there's water, if I push the water down in this container, it comes up in the other. So if I am one container, and my wife is another container, or my friend, or my child, or my mother, whatever I suppress in myself is actually transmitted to the other person when there's a close relationship. And that person is receiving those messages subconsciously and is reacting to us in response to what we're really feeling and not in response to the mask that we're wearing. And so then we feel doubly in, in double injustice. That is, we've been suppressing ourselves, we haven't been asking for what we need, 
The other person is reacting not to that, but to the resentment which is building up within us and the anger which is building up within us. And we're, we feel a second injustice by the fact that after all of this sacrifice, this person is still not treating us well. But he's just reflecting, or she is just reflecting, our real suppressed emotions which are being mirrored in our relationships. That all our relationships are mirrors of what we are feeling. And those emotions are transmitted. So we don't really gain anything. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the people who teach about effective communication use the example of the brown stamps that they used to have in, in America. That every time you bought something, you collected a certain number of stamps. I think they have it in Maranopolis here too, you get <laughs> coupons. And then at, at, when you've got enough coupons, you get the reward. You know? And so some people just collect stamps every time they, this injustice takes place. And when, when you've got enough coupons, then you can just explode on the other person uh, with all of this anger. I mean, this is the, this is the reward. Yeah? And the other guy doesn't know what's happening. <laughs> what, what, what is this reaction? It's, it's completely disproportionate to, uh, to what I've done at this moment. And he doesn't know that I've been accumulating these stamps for two or three months by all of these small things that are happening that I don't mention, and that don't, I don't explain. So I'm just gathering a lot of negativity. The other person feels that injustice is being done to him because he feels that our reactions are out of proportion to what he's doing, and everyone's unhappy. It would be much easier for, to mention all of those little events, one by one, when they happen, rather than to accumulate. So this type of person, the one who suppresses himself, in a way is expecting the other person to know, to know our needs, our feelings, our beliefs, our desires, what bothers us, what doesn't bother us. And the other person is his own, in his own world. He's been brought up in another family. He uh, has different programming, different beliefs, different needs. What bothers us doesn't bother him. Perhaps what bothers him doesn't bother us. And he has no way of knowing unless we explain it. He also may be very tired. He also may have a lot of problems which doesn't allow him or her the, the possibility of thinking about what may be going on in us. In order for you to think about other persons, you've got to be rather happy rather satisfied. I mean, you you have to have solved quite a few of your own problems. Otherwise, you're living in your own world, surrounded by your own problems, and the needs of other persons are not important to you. It may be egotistical, but it's very natural. And it's the way most of humanity lives, because most of humanity has not solved their own personal problems. People live within their own... So we expect these persons to be mind readers in a certain way. But why do we suppress emotions? When we were children, we expressed our emotions rather freely. At some point, however, we got the message that this is not acceptable and that we became vulnerable and that this, vulner this sensitivity or this vulnerability uh, was something which other people may have used to hurt us. After being hurt a number of times by being open, by expressing needs and seeing that those needs are not fulfilled, that other people do not care if I have those needs or those feelings, we stop. So one is the fear of rejection. The fear that if I express this need, that I need your love, or I need your affection, or I need your time, and there's not a positive reaction, I'll feel rejected. I'll feel my self-worth being diminished. Another fear is that I will come into conflict. That is, if I express what I really want in this situation, I'll come into conflict, and I don't want conflict. And what has happened is that we have associated any form of confrontation or difference of needs with conflict. That is, in our mind, if we both have different needs, it means conflict, because we have not learned confrontation skills. We have not learned how to approach another person with different needs, 
or disagreeing with what he is doing without that becoming a conflict. But one thing is confrontation, that is, I want to respect the other person, I want both of us to be happy, but I want to respect my own needs in this situation. And another thing is conflict, in which we both have negative feelings, and we function from those negative feelings. So we can confront without conflict. Of course, it all depends on what the other person is going to do and how many buttons he starts pushing <laughs> on us, in us, whether as to whether we start getting caught up in that negativity. But it is possible for someone to confront an issue without getting caught into this cir vicious circle of negativity. Um, sometimes we don't communicate because we fear that we will lose control. Uh, that we may get totally angry, totally uh, upset. Or we may not communicate it sometimes because we're afraid of hurting the other person. So, uh, for various reasons, either a fear of rejection or a fear of conflict, I would say, is th are the most important ones here. We tend to suppress what is really going on in ourselves and hide it from others. And they, they cannot then respond to that. The second way of communicating is uh, an aggressive, demanding way in which we demand that other persons satisfy our needs. This is usually done in an aggressive way, uh, often with language which intimidates or criticizes or demeans the other person, often with raised voice, and so that we manage to create enough fear in the other person that he will uh, accommodate our needs. Now, you can do this with your children to a certain age, and then they, the role is reversed. <laughs> And they start doing it for the rest of their life. Or uh, a husband may do that to his wife for a long period of time and she, until, as they say in Greek, she brings her head up <laughs> and decides to <laughs> that she has her own needs and desires. So uh, you can do this for a certain length of time with certain persons. But that person is accumulating resentment. That person in some way is going to sabotage that which you're demanding. You can do it through illness, through uh, her own or his own depression, through non-cooperation. There are various ways. If, if this person cannot fight aggressively, he will find other ways of, of playing this power game. And this is a power game. Whose power is greater? Whose needs are going to be satisfied in this situation? When we function in this way, except for the fact that we are not, we are destroying any possibility of real communication with this person, because this person is just going to close themselves off into a shell gradually, uh, and at some point either explode onto us or leave or just stay in this dead relationship for the rest of our lives. The, I think the most important thing is that we don't grow. Because a person who believes that others are responsible for his happiness never take responsibility for their happiness. And so the, they, ha they take this easy solution. I'm not happy, you're to blame. And they just blame the other person. And they don't ever have the need then to do any kind of inner work. <laughs>